أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهد الله فلا مدل له وما يدل له فلا هادي له وأشهد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Indeed, all praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we seek His assistance uh, from the evil consequences of our deeds and our actions. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can try to misguide that person. And whoever doesn't seek Allah's guidance, no one can try to guide that person. And I bear witness that there's no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave servant and messenger ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqati wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun or you who truly believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your lord your creator advises you to have taqwa advises you to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you may be whether you are in uh, behind your laptop when you're looking you're streaming something on your phone when you're chatting with someone dealing with your spouse dealing with your children you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you ought to be in that state and do not leave this world except submitting to him in Islam. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attuqu allaha wa kulu qawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa ma yuqi' allaha wa rasoola faqad faza fawzan azeema. Or you who truly believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, once again, your Lord, your creator advises you to have taqwa, to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you may be. And uh, wherever you may be and the best way to have conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is listen to the recommendations of our Lord where he says Hulu sadida. say truthful words do not lie do not backbite do not talk about other people's families that you have no business talking about and if you're able to do that Allah will rectify your deeds forgive you for your wrongdoings and whoever obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has indeed gained a great success, a great reward. Alhamdulillah, praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is able to see us another Friday, another beautiful day in this month of Ramadan, this day of barakah and blessing, even though we're not at our, at our masajid or maybe some masjids are opening up. Um, but of course, that's not in the, the predominant uh, you know, ruling around the nation. But alhamdulillah, we're still alhamdulillah in this blessed month. And whether we're on an island by ourselves, whether we're in a six foot, we're in a hole and you cannot get out. Whether it's snowing, rain, whatever it is, quarantine, no, no quarantine, we're going to make the best out of this Ramadan. And especially the best out of these 10 nights, inshallah ta'ala. I know one, we all know that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would go out even to extra and do extra ibadah and to spend most of his night awake in these last 10 nights. As mentioned in some of the hadith, where it's mentioned that the Prophet will that he will keep the night of, uh, awake and he will wake up his family, right, and keep them awake in these last 10 nights doing ibadah, reading the Quran, praying, etc., and trying to get to do as much worship as possible. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you in these nights here. And when we're talking about uh, this month of Ramadan, you know, one of the things that we're all kind of doing in this month of Ramadan is asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness, right? Is that that's all something that we all want. And this is this is a month of rahmah. This is a month of forgiveness. And especially in these last 10 nights, we're really going to be increasing that dua. Oh Allah, forgive me, right? Alhumma innaka afu wa tuhibbul afwa fafu anni. Right? This is the dua that uh, the Prophet sallallahu uh, taught Aisha radiallahu anha to make while in these last 10 nights. That, oh Allah, you love afwa. You love pardoning right you love forgiving right so pardon pardon us if you will right and so this is something that we all want and to kind of put this in perspective this 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 concept of rahma and forgiveness like i said all of us want it right all of us want it as much as possible we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rabbil alameen make us of those al marhamun right make us of those who yeah, you forgive ya rahman ya rahim and save us from the hell fire in these nights ameen ya rabbil alameen but one thing is very interesting that on this topic of Rahmah, there's a there's a hadith that's mentioned in Ibn Habban and uh, Tabarani when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was going up to his pulpit, going up to his membar, and he was going to give a sermon. 
And as the Prophet ﷺ was walking up the steps and going to make a sermon, the Prophet ﷺ said Ameen three times. And we all know, the, uh, the the companions knew, and we know obviously now, that the Prophet ﷺ, that is not his norm. That's not what he would do while he's going up and about to make uh, his the sermon, make the khutbah. And so the companions are very keen to observe every action of the Prophet ﷺ. So when he did that, of course they're going to ask, Ya Rasulullah, why did you say Ameen for him? And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explains why did he say Ameen? And we don't want to go through all the, the reason, all the three reasons, because we want to focus on one, and that is the concept of mercy. And one of the reasons the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Ameen, as he explained, he said, Inna Jibreel atani faqala man adhraqa shahra Ramadan falam yughfir lahu the Prophet ﷺ said, as I was walking up to the pulpit, Jibreel alayhi salam, Angel Gabriel, came down to me and said that whoever witnesses this month of Ramadan and is not forgiven in it, that person will enter the hellfire. And Allah will push that person far away. And Jibril said, say Ameen. And the Prophet said that, said Ameen. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says Ameen to a dua or a statement, that means it's going to, it's going to occur. Right? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala accepts the, the supplications of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now whoever sees this month of Ramadan, that's me and you, guess what? We're in the month of Ramadan. Hey, that, that applies to me and you. So we better listen up really well. Whoever witnesses a month of Ramadan and is not forgiven in it, they'll enter the hellfire. Like, wow. Someone has, someone see the month of Ramadan, they're not forgiven, they're going to go to the hellfire? Yeah, that, that makes sense. Because the month of Ramadan is so much full of so much opportunities for forgiveness. How did you miss it? I say it's like the example of, of rain coming down outside. If someone's standing outside and doesn't get hit with a raindrop, that's, that's, that's almost impossible. How did you not get hit with a raindrop? It's raining out there. You're standing out there, and not one drop hits you. Well, it must have been that what? You didn't go outside. I don't know. I don't believe it. If, you're, if it's raining, it's pouring out there, right? And you're standing out there, and not one raindrop got on your clothes or hit you. That means I know you probably didn't go outside. You're not telling us the whole story. You know, you probably just stayed at home. But if you would go outside, not just one raindrop, multiple raindrops would have hit you. And this is just like the month of Ramadan. If the month comes and Rahmah doesn't come upon you, it's that you must have done something wrong. <laughs> something must have happened. You're not telling us the whole story, right? How can you miss that Rahmah? There's so much Rahmah coming down and none of it touched you anywhere. Then something has to be wrong. And that's what the Prophet said, that person will enter the hellfire. Because there's so much opportunity for that. And so that gives us to our next question, my dear brothers and sisters, that how can someone not get the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Ramadan? Like, so what, would, what would someone have to do to miss out on that opportunity? Well, you know what we could do, my dear brothers and sisters? We could gather all the hadith and all the verses of the Quran that talk about rahmah, talk about forgiveness. And then look at it to understand how does someone get Allah's mercy? Or how does someone not get Allah's mercy and Allah's forgiveness? And then if we could gather all those reasons, we'll just make sure that we don't do those type of things. So we get Allah's forgiveness. But of course, we only got 30 minute time span here. We're not going to be able to cover all that. But one thing I want to do is go over an ayah in the Quran. An ayah that's honestly very impactful for me, alhamdulillah. It's one thing that I, I enjoyed uh, really reading this verse and, had, and has a big impact on my life. And that is in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 22, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about forgiveness in there. So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? He says, وَلْيَعْفُوا وَلْيَصْفَحُوا أَلَّا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on the topic concerning about mercy. Allah says, pardon. 
and overlook afwa wa yasfu yani pardon and overlook O mankind, O believers, wouldn't you love, Allah to hibboon, wouldn't you love that Allah will forgive you? Indeed, Allah is the forgiving, the merciful. And here, if you read this ayah, you see it's like a conditional statement. You know, if you come to my house, I will give you $5. What's understood that if you never come to my house, you're not going to ever get $5, just right? The condition is that if you come to my house, we're in quarantine right now, so you're not going to be able to make it, so sorry about that, right? But if you do come to my house, then I will give you $5. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making a very similar condition. For pardon and forgive and overlook, what do you want Allah to forgive you? Meaning that if me and you are not parting and forgiving and overlooking, then we will not receive Allah's forgiveness. That's one thing the way we can understand the ayah. Right? Allah is so merciful. It could be that even though we don't pardon love, well, maybe we still get Allah's forgiveness. But I'm not going to play that card. Right? I want to follow what says in the Quran and be sure, right? I don't want to gamble on this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, pardon and overlook. What do you love that Allah will forgive you? Allah is the most merciful of the forgiving. Right? And so here, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah is saying that if we want to receive Allah's mercy in this month of Ramadan, and especially in these last 10 nights, make sure that me and you are forgiving. Making sure that me and you are parting other people. I don't know what happens when we start making those type of statements. What do people start saying? Well, uh, brother, 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 you don't know what this person did to me. You don't know this person. I have a special, I have a special situation. Oh yeah, you do? <laughs> Yeah, 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 this person took my inheritance and took my parents' money and they spent it and they never gave it to me and that put me in a hardship. This person talked about my family and talked about my daughter and oh, now everyone thinks about this, about our family. Right? This person didn't invite us to their son's wedding. And oh my gosh, that hurt us so much. This person in the masjid, he didn't say salamu alaikum to me. He hasn't said salam. He walks by me every time. It's hurting me so bad. Right? People have, you know, all situations from the whole spectrum. Right? And sometimes, you know, some of like little, little things, but we make it into a big thing. And you're like, ah, I wrote that person off my book. I don't give, ah, I don't care about them no more. They, don't, they didn't give me salams. They didn't invite me to their wedding. They didn't invite me to their iftar. Right? You know, what kind of Muslim are they? <laughs> right? All these type of things. And we're not willing to, we're willing to forgive them. When my son gets married, my daughter gets married, oh, no, you're not getting an invitation. I'm not inviting that person at all, right? And so that, a lot of times we play this type of cards, this tit for tat type thing, right? And tit for tat is not forgiveness, right? That is the opposite of forgiveness, right? And you can say that maybe that person is justified in doing that. Oh, yeah, maybe that is that person is justified in doing that. But we're not. We're talking about the muhsini. We're talking about a little bit higher, if you will. And we're talking about forgiveness and we're talking about those are yani that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to look at and give the Rahman his mercy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says pardon and forgive. And I mentioned some people have these type of situations. But the thing is though, if you go over this ayah, my dear brothers and sisters, and understand the context to it, it makes our things that people have done to us look very little and gives us hope and gives us an encouragement to be of those who forgive it. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah, in Surah Nur, the context is that at one time the, prophet, the Prophet's wife, Aisha radiallahu anha, the respected wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that people were going around and giving uh, and, and spreading a false rumor about indecency that she did, about adultery, about the Prophet's son's wife, astaghfirullah. The Prophet's wife, wives are like umuhatukum. It's like our mothers, right? We won't let anyone say anything about our mothers. No way. We have utmost respect for our mothers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the wives of the Prophet are like our mothers. They, they deserve that type of respect. But there are some people in Medina during the time of the Prophet that wanted to cause trouble. And so they started spreading a rumor. And about adultery, very decent act of stuff for Allah about the Prophet's wife. 
and it happened that one of the people that were spreading this rumor was a relative of Abu Bakr his name was Mishla and he was the one that was actually spreading spreading the rumor also and Abu Bakr remember Aisha anha is the daughter of the of Abu Bakr yes she's the wife of the Prophet Sallam that's one status but also the daughter of Abu Bakr right that's his daughter and we all know like when a parents and a, a you know a father and a daughter right that's a very strong relationship there and so someone to say something about someone's daughter about this incident that's hurtful right no parent is gonna be happy about that no parents gonna be pleased about that they have to protect their children right father the love they have and so Abu Bakr used to spend out to his relative Mishta used to give him financial assistance Abu Bakr subhanAllah is an amazing person right and so when he heard that Mishta, my own family member, is the one talking about my own daughter, my own family member? No, 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 no. I'm taking back that money. Mm -mm, you're not getting anything but from me again, right? After all this money I gave you, all this charity I gave you, and this is how you reply to me, this is how you treat me? No, no, no. So he decides not to give him any financial assistance anymore. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah, Says, Wala yati lil ulul fadla minkum wa saati. I yutu ulul kurba wal masakina wal muhajirina fi sabilillah. Allah SWT says, not, Don't let the virtuous ones among you swear not to give aid to their relatives and the needy and those who have migrated, migrated to Medina. Let them pardon and overlook. That is actually the context of this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Even how great. It is for someone to say something, how evil it is, to say someone to say something about the Prophet's wife, the beloved of, of Allah subhanahu is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you're going to say something about his wife? Oh my, and, and I have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is kabir, that is big, right? And also, this is the daughter of Abu Bakr. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still checked Abu Bakr. Yes, this is terrible. Yes, this is the Prophet's wife, my beloved, right? The Prophet Sallam, and this is his wife. I wouldn't want anyone to do that. But Allah SWT still tells Abu Bakr, what? Even in this situation, even your own family member, ah, oh, you should forgive and pardon. Would you want Allah to forgive you? Wow, subhanAllah. I thought my situation was bad. I thought what someone did to me was, was pretty bad. I thought that, you know, what? that what someone said to me didn't invite me out to here or did this about this or took my inheritance was bad. Wow, this is something much more greater than that. But even in this situation, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still tells them, still tells Abu Bakr to what? To forgive and to pardon. Right. SubhanAllah, how great is that? Even in that situation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still telling them to forgive and pardon. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions in another, uh, sorry, uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa also mentions in another hadith where he says arahimuna yarhamuhum arrahman irhamu man fis fil ard yarhamukum yarhamukum man fis sama a hadith that's in jami tirmidhi where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says those who have rahma those are the rahimun arrahman will show their rahma to them those who are merciful Allah will show merciful to them, be merciful to them. So show mercy to the people on this earth, on this ard, on this earth, and the one in the sky will show mercy to you. Once again, a conditional statement, right? That if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah in these last 10 nights, my dear brothers and sisters, right, we have to get serious about it. You know, we can't talk about theoretically about rahma and how mercy mercy and then yeah alhamdulillah it sounds nice no 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 we have need some action right and the thing is here what we see on television and on tv shows and the people around us people say no no don't forget forgive that person oh they did that to you oh no no they took your money oh forget about them man you don't need them in your life right you don't have to talk to them no let them go their own way man they that's they shouldn't have done that to you no 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 don't Put your dignity down. Don't put your honor down. And that's how some people advise us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is advising us in the Quran. This is what people teach us. 
But let the Quran mold our heart, my dear brothers and sisters. Don't let TV shows mold our heart. Don't let what people advise us mold our heart if they're not talking from the Quran and Sunnah, right? But Allah sent down this Quran to mold us, shows how we need to act. Someone else could tell you who you should be merciful to and who you shouldn't be. This person, no, 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 forget about him. This person, okay, forgive him. No, no, no. Let Allah tell us who we should be merciful, my dear brothers and sisters. Let Allah mold his heart here and let it tell us and let us know who should we be merciful to and how do we practice our mercy. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we should forgive and, and, uh, and pardon. Be of those of the Rahimun, so we retreat, where we receive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. And this is a little note of this, my dear brothers and sisters. When we say forgiving people, that means to get it out of your heart. You forgive them in your heart. Doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go up to them and hug them and embrace them, buy them some flowers, take them out to dinner, and become best friends. If you want to, alhamdulillah. And everyone's situation is different. But at least you say, you know what? What that person did to me X amount of years ago, Allah, you know how wrong that was. Ya Rabbi, forgive them. Just start with that, my dear brothers and sisters. You know, if you want to go other steps, like I said, you want to meet the person, shake hands, and talk it out, and you know, do whatever you want to do. That's that's another thing. But at least start with getting out of our heart, so we could be of those that receive Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's mercies, mercy in these last ten nights, as we talk about the Prophet Sallallahu says that whoever sees Ramadan and not forgiven in it, they'll enter the hellfire. Like, how can you miss not getting Allah's rahmah? And his forgiveness in this month, oh, here we go. Now we got our answer, my dear brothers and sisters. Is that someone who didn't get Allah's rahmah is because they weren't showing rahmah. Ah, now I understand the picture. Ah, oh, now I understand how it goes. Oh, now the Quran and Sunnah is teaching me. Now the Quran and Sunnah is telling me how I should live my life and how my emotions should be and how I should feel. And believe, my dear brothers and sisters, people do some really bad things to people. Like really bad things to people, right? And you all know, you live if you live life enough, you got we got everyone got stories, right? And it's tough. It's really tough. People do hurtful things that really impact their life and give them mental health issues and financial issues. I'm not belittling what what things that you might be going through. I may have lost, I make it easy for you and give you patience, right? And perseverance to take on those trials and those hurtful moments but here is one thing is that you have a great opportunity to learn that forgiveness also and be of those that if you're willing to forgive this person is so much great something great to you and now you're willing to forgive that inshallah ta'ala allah will forgive you for that and, and you and allah, you will earn a loss of ta'ala's forgiveness as we all know that we will show up on yawm qiyamah and very very soon with things much greater than people not giving us salams to us or not inviting us to their wedding or taking our inheritance or doing this. We have much more things that we're going to be presented on the Amul Qiyamah that maybe we did in this world that we're going to be asking, oh Allah, please, we need your rahmah today. Right? And inshallah ta'ala, we will be of those that give Allah's rahmah. And I'll, I'll end on this last thing just to emphasize, um, especially in this last month, like I said, this month of Ramadan is not an ordinary month right it's not just like an, any other month it's something very special and unique unordinary has so much blessings has so much rahmah in it right we're fasting extra prayers it's different so we gotta be extraordinary in this month in our sadaqah in our forgiveness in our ibadah in general we gotta do things that we don't usually ordinarily do and that is, if that is forgiving some people that we don't, you would, wouldn't forgive outside the month of Ramadan, then inshallah ta'ala will be of those people that do now in this month. One thing the Prophet وسلم, mentioned that every Monday and Thursday, our deeds are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And anybody who doesn't associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la yushrik billahi shay'a, that who doesn't associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will forgive them. Allah will forgive their minor deeds, minor sins, every Monday and Thursday. So every Monday and Thursday, this is going down. This happened yesterday, okay? So this is great, right? Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is telling us, mentioned this hadith that's in Sahih Muslim, that our deeds are presented every Monday and Thursday, 
and Allah will forgive our minor sins there that are presented, right? As long as we don't associate partners with him. And then Allah subhanahu wa then the Prophet says, accept. Uh oh. The Prophet says there's a different there's a condition here. He says, Illa Imran, kanat bainihi wa baina aqihi shahna. Except for a person that between them and another person, there's shahna. There's rancor, there's hatred, there's enmity between them. If that's the case, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? Allah, it was we it was we said to them, to the angels, it raku hadaini hatta yastalaha. Leave these two people. Don't forgive. We're not going to forgive them. We're not going to present their deeds. It's going to be suspended, suspended in the air, just waiting until they yastalaha, until they do sulh, until they make amends with each other, until they forgive each other, until they make back relations with each other, and then we'll we'll take up their deeds. And imagine when this month of Ramadan, my dear brothers and sisters. And we're fasting, we're reading Quran, we're praying, you know, I thought are we at home, you know, we're struggling, we don't have that masjid atmosphere, but we're still trying to, you know, pray as much of rakats as possible, right? We're trying to, you know, we make these a lot of du'as, we're trying to do all these good deeds, we're doing salaqat, we're donating, etc. But if it could be that what that we have an issue with somebody, we cut someone off, maybe a family member that we're not talking to. It could be Allahu Alam that our deeds are not going up on every Monday and Thursday. That fasting, that Quran, that sadaqah is just waiting there. Until yastalaha, until we make sulah, until we make back amends with that certain person. And this brings a reality of how important forgiveness is and how the Prophet ﷺ and Allah subhanahu has trained us in terms of how to condition this heart and how to forgive. At the end, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Kareem, Ya Rabbil Alameen, to send your peace and blessings on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make us of the Rahimin, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Make us of those who are, give, are merciful to the people on the earth, so we receive your mercy, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you to take away hatred and envy and jealousy from our heart, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bless us on these last 10 nights of, uh, here in this month of Ramadan. Help us, Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Rabbi Alameen, to witness a Laylatul Qadr, the night of power, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. That's better than 1,000 months, as you have mentioned this Quran. O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive us for our wrongdoings. Enter us in your Jannah. Enter us in your Jannah. Save us from the fire of the hellfire, from the fire of the hellfire Ya Kareem, Ya Rabbi Alameen. O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bless our brothers and sisters throughout the whole world. And whether they're in Yemen, in Egypt, in Palestine, in Syria, in Bangladesh, in Burma, in Kashmir, in Afghanistan, in Iraq, and anywhere they might be suffering, even here in our own country, Ya Kareem, Ya Rabbil Alameen, we ask you to feed them and protect them from the oppressors and the oppressors, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Rabbana la tuakhidna inna sina wa akhfa'na. Rabbana wa la tahmil alayna isran kama hamatu wa la ladhina min qablina. Rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la tuqatalana bih. Wafu anna wa aghfirna wa arhamna. Anta maulana fansur ala al-qawm al-kafirin. ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار على مشفي مرضانا على مشفي مرضانا وارحم موتانا يا كريم يا رب العالمين يا رب أنت الشافي أتنا الشفاء لهذا مرض يا كريم يا رب العالمين سبحان ربك رب عزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلات وسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. May Allah subhanahu wa taala bless all of you. May Allah subhanahu wa taala cure all those who are sick from this coronavirus and return us back to our masajid inshallah taala. Once again, please take heed to the words that were sent today. Myself first and foremost. May Allah bless you these last nights. Take care. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar.